The chickens love when they get treats. Today they got a peach, some blueberries, and a pear. Tomatillos are beginning to come in. They're getting ripe, and I picked probably about a pint of them today. But we have had some interesting issues in the garden. Let's take a look. So welcome back to Cheyenne, Wyoming, Urban Gardener. This is Debbie, Garden Zone 5A, 5B in Cheyenne, Wyoming. And like I was saying, we are having some interesting gardening issues. And it's not just with containers. I know a lot of people are hesitant to grow in containers, but we've actually had quite good luck with growing in containers every season. But this year has been a little bit different and it's not the containers fault. Containers are plenty large enough if you have a tomato plant or a pepper plant or squash or something like that. You really want to have a container that's going to be able to accommodate the nutrients and the uh, water that the plant needs. So you're going to need at least a three gallon container. Sometimes you can put them in a one gallon container. It just depends on the variety of the tomato plants or the squash or the pepper that you're growing. I particularly grow larger varieties of things. I do grow some cherry tomatoes and some smaller peppers, but for the most part, we grow large varieties such as super sauce tomatoes, black creme, um, Cherokee purple, Jubilee, uh, Old German, Pink Belgium, which is a giant tomato. And we grow tomatillos, such as purple tomatillos and gigante salsa verde um, tomatillos and just the regular green variety of tomatillos. And we also grow um, some varieties of other tomatoes that um, maybe I picked up somewhere or something like that. I had a lot of seeds this past season and we had started those seeds at the beginning of the year and most of my own seeds have by far been better than any of the things that I purchased. I purchased a lot of seeds this year as well. I wouldn't say a lot of seeds, but seeds that I didn't have. And I also purchased one pack of peppers, particularly jalapeno peppers, and we've already been through all of that. They didn't turn out to be jalapeno peppers. I got them at Menards. And I believe that they are a Bonnie plants. So there you go. That's the name of the distributor that I got those plants from. So anyway, um, they didn't turn out to be what they were supposed to be. They are instead a, looks like to me, a Hungarian wax pepper. Some people have speculated that it's a yellow banana pepper, but I believe it's a Hungarian wax because they do not get um, extremely large. They stay very small, um, not, not um, tiny, but they stay in the range of about this size. So banana peppers, I've had a lot of luck with banana peppers in the past. They get quite large. I've had some banana peppers that would be sometimes up to a foot long. And these average out at about five to six inches at the most, with most of them being three to four and they are very thin walled and they are um, kind of a stiff outer covering so to me that's that's screaming wax pepper so um, that's one of the reasons why I don't grow wax peppers I know a lot of people like wax peppers I'm not a particular fan of them because I think that they are too thick walled or a too thick skinned thin walled pepper that I really can't do a whole lot with and sometimes if you're getting the hot variety they can just be a little bit too hot for us. Um, we suffer with uh, acid reflux and things like that uh, here in this house. So we avoid those kinds of peppers. So anyway, um, that's the variety that I think we ended up with. I will try to use them in some salsas, but I'm not real sure how much of it we'll use. And we ended up, I bought a pack of six and it ended up being somewhere around eight to 10 because there was some extra peppers that were in the, the package. 
So I thought, oh, we're getting a good deal because we've got extra peppers in there and they were supposed to be jalapenos. And I specifically wanted to grow jalapenos this year for making cowboy candy or something like that. And it ended up not being the case. So that was kind of a flop this year. Now, as far as the containers are going, it's not the containers. It is the season that we're having issues with. Here in Cheyenne, Wyoming, we had from May 14th all the way through to about the second week of July of rain every single day. And not just rain, but rain most of the day, um, three, four, five times a day for that long of a stretch of period. And that is unusual for us. Usually by the end of May, we are starting to get dry. We stay dry all summer long. And we end up having to water our gardens in most cases, unless you've got some other um, methods of when it does rain, having rain catchment or something like that. And we have done a lot of rain catchment this season because, I mean, there was just an abundance of rain. And then when we dried off after the second week of July, we only stayed dry for uh, two to three days. And then it started raining again. And it rained for a good solid two or three weeks every single day. And this time when it rained, it was on average of an inch and a half to two inches or more in rain three or four times a day that was just a downpour and within 20 minutes there would be an inch and a half to two inches of rain then we dried off again and that was towards the uh, first week of August we dried off and now we have been dry every single day We've had a little bit of rain here and there, but it hasn't been anything that's significant. And that's typical of August. I mean, back in Tennessee, where I'm originally from, usually it does dry up in August and it just stays dry for a while, which is fine because there's so much rain in Tennessee all of the time that you don't really worry about that too much. But here, it's different. Um, we have bright sun. Um, some of the most sharp sun I think in the United States we have um, just this bright sun for most of the day uh, this is why we get long season onions because the long season or long day onions we get long day onions because there is typically anywhere from 14 16 hours a day of sun through the summer so it's just bright pounding sun for most of the day and that's why you get the long day onions and um, it dries everything out and plus we have wind in Wyoming there's a lot of wind um, every day there's either a breeze or there's wind and it dries out the soil a lot quicker than if, say if you were in Tennessee or Missouri or something like that so we've had a lot of struggles with that um, so sometimes that we've had to water the containers even when it was raining that day, or it had rained that day, because we knew the next day it was going to be not raining. So, but all in all, we've only ended up watering this season about, I think this is the 11th time today that I watered. And I watered this morning, pretty early. We're trying to do it really early. But as you can see, we have a lot of yellowing on tomatoes, particularly at the bottom. And I'm not too worried about the yellowing, and I'll tell you why. Because the yellowing is just a signal that there's just been some stress with um, watering, a water consistency, things like that. Because we've had so much rain and then we didn't have any rain. Even with watering, you're still going to have some damage to tomatoes. Particularly, which will show it the most, um, in my opinion. Because of the watering consistency of the difference between rainwater and watering yourself. We have to use city water here. So we've got a lot of chlorine and things like that that's added into the water. And um, you'll notice it on plants, but you'll see that they are still blooming. And we still have a lot of green at the top, and they're still producing tomatoes. Versus a couple of the containers which had a lot of damage just from constant water in the season. I mean, each tomato plant's an individual plant. Some will take it more than others, even within the same variety. So we've had a loss of some tomatoes almost entirely, such as this one right here. And some varieties are more resistant to 
all of the differences of what's going on, such as the Black Prince tomatoes, as you can see here. We've got some leaf curl on them, but otherwise, they're still blooming and producing as normal. We've already harvested some tomatoes off of them, and we've got a lot of new tomatoes that are coming on. And then here we have, I believe this is going to be a Berkeley tie-dye. Um, we thought that this was a super sauce tomato, but it's turning out to have some striations on the sides. So I'm thinking this is a Berkeley tie-dye, or it may be an old German, one or the other. We've, we've got so many tomatoes out here that at this point, and I, I did label them, but the labels have now worn off, so we don't know anymore. So this is going to be some large tomato variety, but looks like it's a little bit more resistant to all of the weather changes than some of the other varieties. And the same situation goes on in some of our kiddie pools over here. You can see there's just a difference between some tomato plants, such as this one who has struggled the whole time, versus a tomato plant such as, and this is going to the other side of the kiddie pool, which I believe looks like an old German to me. And that one has not struggled as much. You can see it's still nice and healthy. Lots of new tomatoes setting on. Um, not even any real leaf curl to say. There's a little bit, but not very much. And these kiddie pools actually have such good drainage that they do dry out um, quite a bit. So you do have to water these when there is not consistent water going on as far as rain. So we do have a bit of damage and we've had issues with the squash this season because it has been so cool and so wet um, for so long. And I mean, your temperatures may climb to 80 degrees when it's really rainy, but when it rains, the temperature drop is significant. It's sudden and it can drop 10, 15, 20 degrees in a short amount of time. And it may go back up from there but there's just been inconsistency in having warmth and you need that warmth for squash and cucumbers and melons and things throughout the day. And there's just not been that. Um, now we're back up into the upper eighties and nineties. Uh, we were at 91 yesterday and the day before that at 94 Fahrenheit. So now we've got heat, but we're later in the season. So things that have been growing for a while struggle a bit more because they're already at the basically at the end of their life cycle um, in a climate such as garden zone 5a 5b where they do not last through the winter so they're suffering a little bit you know they're they're having some issues this is a super sauce tomato we have over here in a container and you can see there's a lot of damage um, and the tomatoes are not very large and that's just a lot of water, a lot of rain, and then we've dried off, and now we've got the temperatures back up. And they're being more consistent about temperatures and heat, but again, we're at the end of the season for us. So they're just not doing as well anymore. We did lose a complete tom tomatillo plant. All that's still alive on this tomatillo is the stem. So we're hoping it'll go ahead and finish out what few tomato or tomatillos that it has on it. But you can see they're fairly small tomatillos. And there's some things that have thrived. The calendula that we have back here has paid no attention to what's going on with the weather and has just continued to grow. Same as the dahlias over here. And that's just the way it goes. And we didn't really have any issues with our strawberries this season. We have picked so many strawberries, it's insane. They're still blooming and they're still producing because these are all ever-bearing varieties. So we just have, and you can see the pink blossoms over there. We have Berry Basket Rose, we have Seascape, we have Mountain Strawberries. Oh, all kinds of varieties in here, and they're all mostly ever-bearing. And even if they're June-bearing, they're still bearing because we had such a, a late start. We do finally have some watermelons. They're really small still right now. I'll show you that um, the size is still really small. But they are gaining in size every day 
quite significantly. So perhaps we'll have a watermelon or two before the complete end of the season. And we have a tomatillo here that is absolutely full, some of which are almost ready to pick. And of course we have newer ones coming on at the top, which will take longer to get ready. And then we have the larger tomatillo over here that's just enormous. And it is was late in the season setting fruit, but it is finally doing that. And oh boy, do we have a lot of them. There are hundreds in here. And there's actually two plants in here. And we do have cantaloupe that are finally setting on the vines. You can see a cantaloupe there. And there's one up against the tomatillo stalk. But you can see the massive size of that tomatillo stalk down there. And see there are two. And the other one is a little bit smaller. But we do have cantaloupes finally setting on the vines. And our okra is getting pretty large now. Again, this is a container variety called Big Bubba. So it is a lot smaller than the larger guys. And it looks like to me they're just about getting ready to bloom. So look forward to those. And we didn't have very many peppers this season either because it's just been too cool and too wet and I keep saying that in every video but um, I think we just need to stay consistent with it to know exactly what's going on with why there's such a bad growing season even though I planted so much more than I normally do. Now we have started getting some cucumbers finally and this was the spring cucumber that I have. It's called um, Tasty Green and it's an English variety of cucumber so you can see there we do have some cucumbers peeking through the vines there and there's a few more on it but see this guy should have been ready sometime in June and it didn't because it was just too cool and too wet but it finally started um, really producing and we've had a lot of hail damage too every day nearly we had hail damage throughout June and July so and then um, it started sometime in mid-June and then just didn't let up. So we've had a whole lot of hail damage as well, which will also take a toll on the plants. Um, you can see, such as if you're looking at, say, this tomato plant, you can see these little white flecks here. And that is hail damage from where they've been hail struck. And it was quite large hail. We had some hail that was actually fist-sized. Most of it was about quarter-sized. Some of it was dime-sized. And some of it was pea-sized, but still any hail is damaged. You can see the damage on the watermelons here. Yes, we do have some watermelons finally. So they were very marked up from all of the hail damage. You can see the bigger one here. So they do have quite a few marks on them from all the hail damage that they had. And then, of course, we had some cantaloupes in here. These are Orange Dew, Charente, and a couple other varieties, and they just did not do much of anything. And that's because of all the cool, wet, and hail damage. We did pick some tomatillos today from this particular tomatillo, which were looking quite nice. And then we have some eggplant in here that we're still hoping that will produce something, but again so cool so wet they are just now starting to bloom these were from seed that i had saved and hopefully they'll do something but i'm not real sure at this point but we did plant some um, cucumbers back here along the fence and we have some borage and some nasturtiums all of those to be so small are actually producing this one here is a little bit larger and they are putting some cucumbers on and little pods for the nasturtiums blooming and stuff like that. And we do have some peppers that are decent sized in different areas. Um, mostly in the garden is doing better because that is a little bit more sheltered from hail than out here in the containers which are just basically subject to elements as you can see. 
And we do have some artichokes. Look at these artichokes. Nice sized artichoke. Look at that. So we only have the one so far that's quite large. They've got some off um, side shoots. And then we have one over here that's not quite as big. It's still decent, but not huge. This one is very nice though. This looks like one that I would buy in a store. And there's another view of that cucumber and our dill. We keep cutting the dill back because we're waiting for the dill to catch up. So we can use it with our cucumbers. And there you can see the cucumbers a little bit better. And these are the Tasty Green again, so they're an English variety. And we do have some nice sized tomatoes sitting back here in and amongst our tomatillos and cantaloupes. And it's a little difficult to get back there. And then we have our herb garden over here that has our celery. Our celery is getting to the point where we could actually um, get some stalks from it. And we have picked beans in here. There's beans, Royal Burgundy beans, early serve. And uh, we have picked a lot of beans. We've had three half bushel baskets full of beans at this point. And our yellow chamomile is finally going to seed. It had bloomed its heart out all summer long. And now you can see that it is going to seed. And we have had a world of blooms of cosmos, which have pretty much ignored what's going on with the weather. And we did plant some more cucumbers because we haven't had so many cucumbers this season. And these are a variety called, and you can see them right here, Early Fortune, which is a Russian variety of cucumber that is supposed to be ready very quickly, around 45 to 50 days. So hopefully, We'll see some cucumbers from those guys um, right at the beginning of September or around the second week of September. So we'll hope for those. And then we had three tomato plants out here. And I believe these are black cherry tomatoes. And they look so much better than a lot of the tomatoes in the garden or in the containers because they were actually in the garden tower. We pulled them out because it just was not enough soil and put them over here. So I think that prompted them to be a lot better. And there's also consistent um, sprinkler system in here. So they do get watered very, very consistently. We've had a lot of sunflowers this season, not very big ones, but those are getting ready to bloom. And we've had some zinnias, but they have been slow to bloom because it has been so cool and so wet for so long and lots of snapdragons. We've had dwarf snapdragons, the tall snapdragons. There have just been all kinds of varieties of colors. And again, our cosmos through here. And there is a zinnia that is bloomed. And that was left, it was basically a volunteer from last season. And here you can see some straight eight cucumbers that are finally producing. We're not going to have very many, I don't believe, but it'll be enough for a few jars of pickles here soon. And then we have some more varieties of cucumbers that I planted over here when I knew that the season was going to be a flop on cucumbers. So we went ahead and got those up and going. And this is in the new extended part of the garden, which has done extremely well. And it has not had any fertilizer in it. It does not have even any organic fertilizer. This is just straight soil no fertilizers, no amendment of the soil, nothing. This is straight native soil. And we planted some Alaskan snow peas over here in a circle around this trellis. They haven't really climbed the trellis. They've actually just been climbing each other. Um, and they're getting ready to bloom and produce some peas, surprisingly already. And the three sunflowers that I had planted, or a group of sunflowers that is, have done really really well in here and then we had planted some more at the base that are a shorter variety dwarf sized um, and 
a mixture of sunflowers and they are doing really really well um, I'm not sure they'll bloom because they're just still really small but it's just pretty even seeing the green in here and then we have planted beans in here and I unfortunately had um, squirrels get in here and eat a lot of the beans so we don't have a whole lot of beans in here but we'll have some that should produce and then we had a wall of zinnias and cosmos and calendula in here and all of those are just about ready to start blooming and will probably be the nicest flowers that I've had this season because they just look so healthy in comparison. And we do have a couple of other cucumbers in here. And I think this one is a variety that I call, that was called homemade pickles. So it's probably just a pickler variety of cucumber um, of another name, but they just threw it in a bag and called it that. You can see we have some cucumbers already sitting on the vines here. So pretty soon those will be up and going really well. And again, we have about six vines in here of those. We did have a couple of cantaloupes, but I'm not sure they're going to do anything um, because it's just so late in the season. And we did have a volunteer cosmos that came up from probably the seed across the walkway. And it's a lot bigger. And we have a couple of rooted um, suckers from tomato plants in here, and they are taking off. Hopefully they'll produce something before the season ends out. And then we had another group of dill, which is doing really, really well, starting to get a lot bigger now pretty quickly. And then three red acre cabbages that are starting to make heads. And we won't worry about the frost with those because they'll handle a frost. They'll even handle a light freeze without much worry. And then we had four zucchinis in here. One doesn't look like it's going to do much of anything, but the other three are looking quite nice. And again, these are fairly young, only a few weeks old, and they're doing really well. And then we planted some more of those early fortune cucumbers in here, and I need to get in here and weed, because again, this was newly broken ground, so it's gonna have a lot of weed pressure. So we'll get in here and clean that out. But those are looking a lot nicer already. So that is our container situation. Garden tower still looking amazing. We have loads of strawberries on these. Yes, we do have a few sunburned leaves on there and I just pulled them off and they replaced them with nice clean leaves. We have a marigold in here that is massive. It is the entire size and it's starting to bloom. I see a bloom head right there. Oh, my phone's having difficulties out here. It's getting it's getting warm already, and I believe that is some harmony that came up and is blooming. And again, look at the snapdragons. These are at the base of my lemon tree. I have a lemon tree. Actually, I have a lemon tree and a mandarin orange tree. And look at those blooms. These were all volunteer snapdragons. Didn't plant them. We had them in here last season and they just grew back and they are doing beautifully. And we finally had some forget-me-nots that bloomed, looking fantastic. All those blooms everywhere and the bees are loving them. And look at that massive sunflower. And then we finally got one of the teddy bear sunflowers that is blooming. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Gorgeous head. And we have a lot of spaghetti squash. So spaghetti squash have been doing really, really well. The first a few of them did not get set. And this one has had some hail damage. But after that, we've had spaghetti squash like crazy. Again, that one got hail damage too. You can see that little hole. But it'll still grow. It'll scar over. 
And then we've got another one hiding in there and another one. So lots of spaghetti squash. We've got a few spaghetti squash plants. We have some Tahitian squash in here, red curries. I'll show you the red curries here in just a moment. We're going to go into a part two of the video because this one we only records about 30 minutes. So we will see you in the part two. Like, subscribe, hit the notification bell for notices on new videos. So that way you see the part two.